this is what he said in 2020. Let's let's play this video because it's it's pretty damn interesting. Normal volunteer for a phase one trial to see if it's safe. That's the fastest that's ever been done. That's the good news. The challenging news is that even at that rocket speed, it's going to take a few months to show that the initial safety is okay. Then you go into a phase two trial, which instead of involving 45 people, which we have in the phase one trial, it involves hundreds if not thousands of people. That will take another six to eight months to even know if it works. So at the fastest we can go, it's going to take a year to a year and a half to know if we have a vaccine that we can use. There's another element to safety, and that is if you vaccinate someone and they make an antibody response and then they get exposed and infected, does the response that you induce actually enhance the infection and make it worse? And the only way you'll know that is if you do an extended study, not in a normal volunteer who has no risk of infection, but in people who are out there in a risk situation. This would not be the first time, if it happened, that a vaccine that looked good in initial safety actually made people worse. There was the history of the respiratory syncytial virus vaccine in children, which paradoxically made the children worse. One of the HIV vaccines that we tested several years ago actually made individuals more likely to get infected. So you can't just go out there and give it. Oh, so there you go. Now, it's, I mean, look, Ben. It's wild. Isn't that pretty wild to hear him say so? He flat out says that, look, even if the initial testing looks good, there's no way we could know for years. But then as soon as the initial testing looked good, not only did he say you have to get this, but said anyone who's against this is anti-science. This, th this is why I'm telling you it's not that Fauci's wrong. It's that he's evil. Many scientists are beginning to believe that a vaccine against AIDS may be impossible to make and too dangerous to test. If you take it and then a year goes by and everybody's fine then you say okay that's good now let's give it to uh, 500 people and then a year goes by and everything's fine you say well then now let's give it to thousands of people and then you find out that it takes 12 years for all hell to break loose and then what have you done the issue of safety something that i want to make sure the american public understand it's not only safety when you inject somebody and they get maybe an idiosyncratic reaction they get a little allergic reaction they get pain there's safety associated. Does the vaccine make you worse? And there are diseases in which you vaccinate someone, they get infected with what you're trying to protect them with, and you actually enhance the infection. You can get a good feel for that in animal models. So that's going to be interspersed at the same time that we're testing. We're going to try and make sure we don't have enhancement. It's the worst possible thing you could do is vaccinate somebody to prevent infection and actually make them worse. Uh, but she's had the flu for 14 days. Should she get a flu shot? Well, no. If she got the flu for 14 days, she's as protected as anybody can be because the best vaccination is to get infected yourself. And so she should if not she get it? If she really has the flu, if she really has the flu, she definitely doesn't need a flu vaccine. Next, if she really has the flu. She right. should not get it again. No, she day. doesn't need it because the, it, it's, the be, it's the most potent vaccination is getting infected yourself. Henderson, North Carolina. Good morning. But the one thing historically people need to realize that even if there is some asymptomatic transmission, in all the history of respiratory-borne viruses of any type, asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. The driver of outbreaks is always a symptomatic person. Even if there's a rare asymptomatic person that might transmit, an epidemic is not driven by asymptomatic carriers. I mean, obviously, we can't just turn off the spigot on the system we have and then say, hey, everyone in the world should get this new vaccine we haven't given to anyone yet. But there must be some way that we grow vaccines mostly in eggs the way we did in 1947. In order to make the transition from getting out of the 
tried and true egg growing, which we know gives us results that can be you know, beneficial. I mean, we've done well with that to something that has to be much better. Uh, you have to prove that this works, and then you've got to go through all of the clinical trials, phase ones, phase twos, phase three, and then show that this particular product is going to be good over a period of years. That alone, if it works perfectly, is going to take a decade. And the best way for me to prevent getting an infectious disease and having to have you as my doctor is what? Um, wearing a mask. No, um, no, no. I don't need to do that. <laughs> you, um, if somebody's, I can see they're ready, ready to sneeze or cough, you, walk away. You avoid all the paranoid aspects and okay. do something positive. A, good diet. B, you don't smoke, I know. I know you don't drink, at least not very much, so that's pretty good. Get some exercise. I know that you don't get as much exercise as yes, you should. That's correct. Get good sleep. I think that the normal, low-tech, healthy things okay. are the best thing that you can do, David, is stay healthy. All right, well, I'm going to try to do that. I wonder if you would recommend locking down schools if you had to do it all over again. Well, you know, again, it's, uh, first of all, I didn't recommend locking anything down. You're, you're, you're asking me questions. You're talking about the CDC is the public health agency mm -hmm. that uses their epidemiologists and their science-based approach to make recommendations. And when it became clear that when we had um, community spread in the country with a few cases of community spread, this was way before there was a major explosion like we saw in the Northeastern corridor driven by New York City metropolitan area. I recommended to the president that we shut the country down. You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking, you know, he doesn't know anything really about anything. And I'd say that to his face, nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy and he doesn't understand medicine and he, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera.